Join thousands of other smart business owners who have finally realized review sites, daily deal sites, and pay-per-click ads are just too expensive and simply don't work. They have learned the power of becoming a Scout Puppy local trusted merchant and are being rewarded with new customers and solid steady growth for their small business. The experts at Scout Puppy build you a powerful one-page standalone website on steroids hosted on their platform. It includes all content writing, paired with over 40 strong keywords, pictures of your small business, a video, links back to your existing company website or social media, and contact info. They then submit your website to over 200 search engines, giving you maximum exposure to receive tons of free organic traffic and new customers. All of this for just $89 a month, no contracts. Go to ScoutPuppy.com and click Add Your Business to sign up today. And on the checkout page, our savvy listeners get a 50% discount for the first month. Enter SBR50. Savvy Business Radio, drawing out the best from our guests with our host, Christina Nichman. On Savvy Today, we're joined by fitness and nutrition expert Maria Broad. You are what you eat, so eat sexy. Find out more about Maria and her work at SexyFoodSexyYou.com. Hi, Maria. Welcome to Savvy Business Radio. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. How are you, Christina? I'm doing fabulous. It's so awesome to have you here today. We met very interestingly at a health fair at a place that I work at, and you happen to come on by and share your wonderful talents as a nutritionist and helping people find the perfect healthy lifestyle for them. And we got to talking and we're like, we have to have you come talk to our savvy audience because often people will get on the wagon in January, say they want to do all these wonderful things to their body, feel better inside their body. And then they just fall off a little bit later saying it's too hard. I don't get to eat the stuff that all my friends are eating or do the things they're doing. And it feels too restrictive. Well, you have found a way to have a great healthy lifestyle without feeling restrictive. You operate your wonderful business, Sexy Food, Sexy You, because you can have both. You can have Sexy Food, Sexy You, enjoy your life and be healthy at the same time. So share with our audience a little bit about your background, what brought you to creating your business and being a health nutritionist. Sure. Um, so I'm a foodie. I have been a foodie my whole entire life. And I've always been pretty obsessed with fitness. I think my mom was a really great role model for me growing up. She was always very healthy, really active. She played volleyball. She worked out every day. Um, so I, I just remember seeing that and eating very healthy in the house. So I had a good foundation. And um as I got older in my 20s, I had a little bit of some traumatic events where some people very close to me passed away for health reasons. And it really shook me. And um, it turned my life around. Um, it made me realize that I wanted to take much better care of myself and the power of food, the power of exercise, and the power of our mind. It's all connected. And from there, I, you know, I went to school for nutrition and I also got my yoga certification and I'm now teaching yoga and health coaching mm -hmm. full time. My background is also psychology and counseling. So counseling and health coaching go together really nicely. So yeah, it all worked out. Yeah. And what I got from our conversation is that you're the full package. I think when I talk to people who either just do exercise, I'm a trainer or I just do nutrition, they leave out the other very important components, which is your mind, body, and spirit. They're all interconnected. They're not, you can't just deal with one and leave out the mind and the emotions or just deal with the food and then leave out the fact that you have an unhealthy relationship with your body and exercise and movement. They all have to come together as a unit to be fully integrated, to give you your best results and to make you your best you. Absolutely. And there's so much that goes into our relationship with food. And like you were saying, people become very inspired come January, you know, with the New Year's resolutions, and they're going to change everything. And it really is a lifestyle. And what I work with clients on is creating habit and routine and creating joy mm. in the way that you eat and the way that you exercise and eliminating that chore mentality. Mm. Because if it feels like a chore, then you're not doing the right exercise and you're not eating the right food. It should feel joyful. 
So to be a runner for a long time, I run occasionally, but it there's times that it feels like a chore for me. And for that reason, it's not my exercise of choice. And I really recommend people do what makes them happy, whether it's dancing, running, everybody has something that they enjoy. Yeah, I, I love that. And there was a, a woman a number of years ago who's become the top um, health fitness n- nutritionist in, in Canada. And she had mentioned that, you know, people come rigid ideas of, of diet. And she she was really focused on eating clean, basically just anything with not, without preservatives. It doesn't have, you know, it didn't come out of a box or a container. It's just what God made. You know, I pick it, I brew or whatever, and I, I, I eat it. Um, but it, ne- it never means that I never eat a cupcake or, or dessert. It just means that my majority of my food is very healthy fruits and vegetables. And I've now grown a taste for it. And, you know, when you've gotten used to eating crap food, a lot of maybe unhealthy food, it becomes almost like you're addicted to it. And I know for me, I was very addicted to Coca-Cola. I could, oh my gosh, I could drink two liters of that stuff. And I remember thinking, there's no way I could ever, ever give this up. I love it too much. And I don't know what it was, Marie, uh, Maria, that one day I, I wasn't liking the way I felt with it. So I started to eliminate it bit by bit. And over a two to three month period, I just got to a point where I didn't need it anymore. And not only did I not need it, now I just completely don't crave it. And But it took time. Like you said, it's a lifestyle. And that's why I've very much been opposed to the idea of diet, because it seemed like a Add four letter word because it, it makes you feel that sense of obligation instead of that sense of joy of learning to find things that make your body happy without having to feel that it's a duty. Absolutely. I am not for diets at all. I'm all about lifestyle. You know, I, I do host detox groups, but the detox groups I host, we eat really healthy, fun food. Mm-hmm. So, yes, d- dieting ultimately, it just doesn't work. And it really just creates that negative relationship. Yeah. And and the thing is, like, for me, interestingly, Maria, back in my late 30s, when I started to even think about healthier lifestyle, I had never had a salad in my life. My parents idea of vegetables was canned vegetables, and occasionally, um, spinach that was creamed, which means you put flour in it or corn that was creamed, completely, that's a grain. Um, so I, I didn't know vegetables. I didn't know greens at all. And so I had my first salad at like 30 something. And I was like, wow, this is pretty good spinach. This is nothing like the green <laughs> spinach we had in the freezer. But you begin to find, because it looks not that interesting when you see a bunch of leaves in, in a plate, right? And so I was like, oh, who eats this rabbit food? But once I tried it, my friend made me a nice salad. I was like, this is pretty darn good. And now there are times where I choose that over some yucky, you know, maybe unhealthier food because I'm really enjoying it. So what do you tell your clients that come to you, maybe have never had a taste like I had for any of the healthy stuff? How do you begin to get them transitioned to enjoying these type of foods? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've had clients that have told me they don't eat any vegetables, Mm -hmm. that they don't like none at all. And we, we start really slow because usually even if somebody says they don't like any salads or any vegetables, there are certain flavors they do like. And so, you know, we, starts small and, you know, do you like avocado and, you know, making salads different. It doesn't have to be if they're opposed to the lettuce or maybe they they like cooked vegetables more, but I always um, recommend people to, to get creative and to use the ingredients they like and to just try something new in a different way. You know, sometimes people have a sweet tooth. So I'll say, Roasted vegetables is a really good way to go. If you tend to have a sweet tooth and you don't really like the flavor of vegetables, so roasted sweet potatoes, roasted carrots, these are really sweet tasting vegetables that can give you kind of your sweet fix Mm -hmm. and they don't taste like the typical vegetable or salad. So sometimes it's even just giving them the option of cooked rather than raw. Sometimes people have, you know, a different mm-hmm. preference in that sense. Yeah. And as you grow, as I've grown, uh, then you begin to have your taste buds kind of evolve and be like, oh, okay, I kind of like this now. I never used to like cranberries. Now I love cranberries, dried cranberries. I just, I have them with me with nuts sometimes if I'm hungry and it's a great way to snack um, healthily, 
but on the run so I could have some almonds and, and cranberries. And it's like, oh my gosh, that was so satisfying. Um, but it, it's great. It's a great snack. It's inexpensive and you, it's easy to carry around. That's the other thing I hear from people. It's hard to be healthy because carrying around salad is not that easy with dressing and all the stuff that you add into it. Right. I mean, I'm a New Yorker, so I, I bring my snacks and food everywhere with me, but I'm a huge fan of a backpack. Yeah. So, yeah. As cute as purses are, it's just not functional for me. So I, I do. I, pie, I pack my salads and I generally either don't dress them or just a little bit of lemon juice and um, salt and pepper so that I don't have to worry about any leaking or anything like that. And then also with the clients who, you know, they're opposed to vegetables or they've never had a salad, like you said, you said, um, sometimes sneaking veggies into smoothies is a really great way for people to get their nutrition yeah. without tasting it. Like for instance, uh, you can't really taste kale or spinach in a smoothie, or you can even get like spirulina and experiment with those different flavors. Mm -hmm. And with the fruit, it kind of masks that flavor it gets people getting the nutrition without going full on yeah. just yet. Yeah, act, absolutely. As they begin to grow and, and cultivate new tastes for things that they hadn't beforehand. One thing, now let's talk a little bit about the movement. I thought it was interesting. You said running, you realize feels like a chore sometimes. So you're like, I don't do it all the time because it's not the exercise that appeals to me. I don't want to feel like I'm forcing myself to do something out of obligation. Um, but what's interesting is uh, for me, for a number of years, I didn't move either. And I'm sure there's a lot of people you've worked with who have been not moving. How do you get them used to or excited about moving in some fashion and finding what works for them? Right. So usually we, we, we start talking, we figure out, you know, what have you tried already? What have you tried? What have you liked? What haven't you liked? What's worked? Um, or what has worked in the past or what brought you joy in the past sometimes is a good way to kind of open up that conversation and getting people to find joy, you know, like finding out, are you a music lover? If so, you know, working out with music is a game changer. I, um, I'm not obsessed with running, but occasionally I get the urge to run and music really makes my running or my workout just to the next level. It, it you know, it's kind of, you know, I feel very free. I'm having fun. You know, I'm on the treadmill. I feel like I could dance. So kind of giving people, you know, those options, like creating a really wonderful playlist so that your workout feels more fun or just really kind of tapping into their background and trying to see even like from childhood, what were some activities that you did that were really fun, that, that didn't feel like a workout. Some people, you know, even shopping, they, they really enjoy shopping. Well, that's a workout. Maybe you want to be careful with the finances, even if it's just window shopping, but even if it's just walking around town, whatever it is that you enjoy doing that you don't realize that you're moving. Yeah. And I also really encourage people to make every day a workout, whether you have a gym membership or not. We have choices every day. If you live in suburbia and you have a car, you know, parking your car further away so that you have a longer walk into the grocery store. As, um, as a New Yorker, I take the subway everywhere and I make a point never to take the escalator. I go up the stairs or if I'm feeling, you know, competitive, I'll run up the stairs. Mm -hmm. And no matter how tired I feel, by the time I get to the top, I have more energy than I did before. Mm -hmm. And it's really amazing. Just little life hacks like that what? can make a huge difference in your day. Oh, I like life hack. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the stairs. Um, I get made fun of a lot for the stairs. I'm a huge fan of stairs. If there are stairs, I am taking them. If I go to someone's building in New York and they're on the 10th floor, mm -hmm. I will go and walk up the stairs because to me, it's, it's a challenge and it's a fun way to get a workout without actually going to the gym. Yeah, and so, it, it's, it's, and it's true. And I see people at the gym on the Stairmaster. I'm like, you could just do the stairs of the no way. You don't need to go on the stairmaster. <laughs> oh, the stairmaster is um it's a torture device. <laughs> well it's funny, as a say. kid I like bikes and I rode bikes like crazy. And one of my favorite things at the gym when I'm not taking class, because I love classes. I love the spirit of all the energy around me and getting involved with all the people around me and feeling their energy. That works for me. Um but when you're either on the treadmill or the elliptical or bike type machine, 
I like them, but I realized because it brings me back to my childhood where I rode bikes for hours. Now living in New York, I, I'm not as comfortable driving or, or biking down the street because it's so crowded. Um, but I, I still love that type of exercise. And so I see what you mean by getting it involved or connected with what gives you joy. And for me, as a kid, I remember one of the things I used to love to do, and we had a house in Virginia, is cleaning, like vacuuming and heavy cleaning. I would feel all sweaty, and I did a bunch of, you know, lunges and squats. I mean, you're not thinking about them, but you're doing them because you have to squat to go and clean stuff on the floor or whatever. But you actually get quite a workout just by cleaning your house. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, cleaning is a huge workout. And there's, there's just so many ways that you're, you can work out without doing that. Because a lot of I've met people and clients that it will say to me, they don't like any form of exercise, yeah. that it's always it feels like a chore to them. Um, one client in particular, I it was really, you know, I had to dig deep with her to find exercise that was her Mm -hmm. least favorite. She she was happy to do the diet, healthy diet, not the bad one, <laughs> healthy <laughs> lifestyle choices. Yeah. And she really just didn't want to move. And mm -hmm. we finally talked some more and found that photography was a huge passion of hers. And she really loved being in nature. So through that, we, you know, we had her out taking more pictures. So she was expressing her creativity while exercising. And then also found that she really loved hiking. Uh -huh. So it's, you know, sometimes we have to dig a little deeper. Yeah. And here's something I think we can touch on, Maria, is that for me, when I got started last year, uh, we had spoke um, when we first got together about my journey into bringing back health into my life. I had stopped moving pretty much. I had I'd taken on very stressful jobs and, and stuff and kept myself very sedentary, but also was eating very unhealthily and add the stress component. And you've got a recipe for disaster. Uh, but once you've gotten your body used to being very sedentary, it's not going to be easy. No matter what exercise you're like, I kind of like it, but I'm so comfortable sitting on my couch. <laughs> it, it's going to be a little uncomfortable getting out of that routine of, of being sedentary and getting back to movement. Absolutely. And, um, you know, you really want to inch it. Mm -hmm. When it comes to going from, you don't want to go extreme. And when I work, with clients, I always like to do realistic, small goals yeah. because you can't go from not moving from the couch to signing up for, you know, uh, CrossFit. Oh. It, you really want to start to inch it. So, you know, starting with 15 minutes and doing something, like I said, that brings you joy and then going from there. But I really recommend that people do a little bit every day, even if you're not going to the gym, just like a conscious choice, taking the stairs, taking the long way home, mm -hmm. whatever that may be that you can kind of squeeze in extra walking or tracking with there's so many wearable fit devices now that people use. And some people are really motivated by that. But any way that you can get extra steps in and getting your body used to that movement, you're start you'll start to crave it. Just like you said you didn't really mm -hmm you know, you didn't eat salads regularly. And now you start to crave these healthy foods. And the reason for that is the more we eat, and the more we do of something, um, the more those endorphins start to fire up, and we start to crave them more and more. Mm. So that's the real trick is getting your brain mm. to really enjoy and find joy in exercise and to find joy in the healthy eating. I really like to do an 80 20 rule with my life. And anyone who comes to me is, you know, 80% of the time, really try to live healthy, eat healthy, exercise. And then 20% of the time, you only live once, you know, I was in Italy, I ate pasta, I drank wine, I was not going to not enjoy what the country had to offer. Yeah. So I really believe that in having a full balanced life. Yeah, that that is a wonderful point. And interestingly, a lot of people I met, my mom stayed, oh my God, I think six months to a year in Germany studying. And she said, they eat cake every day at three o'clock. It's like the thing, cake and coffee or cake and tea. And she said, I lost weight because everything there, I had to walk miles to get to places. So I was doing much more exercise, but having that piece of cake at 3 p.m., I still lost weight and I felt better than I ever did. It was the getting out in nature and, and just moving and I think that's, we've become a little skewed with the idea of 
duty and I've got to eat like this, but it's a duty. And look at all my friends eating hamburgers. And until you realize that this is not a duty, this is something you're doing for your body to make you feel better. And it's actually, you're giving it a gift. You're giving yourself a gift, but it doesn't mean you never touch a burger again, or you never have pasta again. Um, you can have it, but it's, I think that the true thing, as you said in the beginning, is really just finding that balance. Absolutely. Absolutely. My, my husband lost weight in Italy and he ate dessert two to three times a day. <laughs> we walked everywhere. Everything's uphill. Yeah. And um, you really get so much exercise in, in Europe. They are a very active culture, I feel. Mm -hmm. And what I really like about... Um, like you were saying about not depriving yourself and never saying you're never going to have a cheeseburger again or the pasta is um, another life hack that I love is, you know, our portions are out of control oh in this country. Yeah. And if you can, we can really, we can all enjoy everything that we want within reason and with normal portions and really hydrating. You know, most of us are so dehydrated and we don't realize that we're actually not starving. We're just really, really thirsty. So trying to start the habit of drinking a glass of water before you eat a meal, just to kind of balance yourself and to see where your hunger is. And I'm also a huge fan of splitting meals, just because the average meal size at a restaurant is overboard. You know, I split with my friends, I split with my husband, I'm a huge fan of just not having a meal for myself, because a lot of us our program to clean our plate. I know I am. I'm a, <laughs> I, I will, whatever is on my plate, it's going to be completely empty when it's because it's just, that's how my brain works. And a lot of people are that way, but they see it, they eat it. So just kind of getting in the habit of splitting and serving yourself a smaller portion and really eating mindfully, chewing and seeing how you feel. Wait 10 minutes before you get seconds. It makes a really huge difference. And I've seen so many clients have success with just, you know, creating healthy portions. Wow. This is interesting to me. You mentioned Europe and I went there years ago. <laughs> I was in Spain and I asked for an ice cream cone and they gave me like the smallest little scoop. And I thought they're doing that because I'm a tourist. They're trying to chip me. <laughs> and I was so upset because I was like, look at this little scoop. That's like nothing. I mean, here, that, that would be... Uh, um a quarter of a scoop of what we get in Baskin Robbins or something. Um, so, but then I went outside the the place and everyone had the same scoop, Spaniards, everyone. I was like, oh, okay, that's just what they eat. And then I went to restaurants and it was like everything fit in the middle of the plate. It was just a good portion. And I realized, okay, I don't feel, I don't feel like I need something after this meal. It was enough. And, it, it, and when I came back here, I was I started to look at what the portions we got. And I was realizing that, wow, it's much more than I needed. But it's not until you step out and you realize I didn't need that much on my plate. It was not necessary. Absolutely. It's, it's a really big difference. And seeing the cultures that are very fit and um, their portions are smaller, their consumption of animal products is lower. And they just have more active lifestyles. So the more that we can kind of mm -hmm. bring that into our life, the better. Yeah. And you mentioned something else, Maria, that was interesting. You know, you're starting at ground zero with maybe movement. Don't go and take a CrossFit class. Uh, last year before, <laughs> <laughs> last year when I first got started on this whole, you know, starting to focus on eating more healthy, I joined a, a sports membership. And I went to this really, well, I didn't think it was going to be a hard class, but when you haven't been moving, anything is more difficult. So it was like, we did 140 sit-ups, 100 push-ups. I was like sitting there like, are you kidding me? I, I can't even do one push-up right now. Uh, but it made me realize that this is not where I'm at. You got to start where you're at. And it's okay that if you take a class, that if you can't complete it, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, do what you can, but don't ever force yourself to go beyond where your body's ready. Because at that point in time, I almost injured my back because I was like, you know, 140 push-ups. I mean, I mean sit-ups when you haven't done any sit-ups. I mean, yeah, you can't start running in, until you can start crawling and walking. Absolutely. And, you, you know, to prevent injury, you want to be careful with that. And fitness is really, it's a lifelong journey. And we, we go to different stages in our life with our exercise. And I kind of love that about exercise because it's exciting. And, you know, sometimes you take a longer break 
and you find that you might regress a little bit and that, but it's pretty incredible where the muscle memory is and that your body adapts relatively quickly, Mm -hmm. but it's important not to go to the extreme so that you're not injuring yourself and allowing yourself to ease into it. Absolutely. Because now you had mentioned the endorphins that start to build both when you start eating more healthy and your body begins to crave it. But also with exercise now, I'm, I'm, there's a couple of different types of exercise in the gym that I'm enjoying, like weightlifting. If you had asked me years ago, I, I'd say that was probably the number one exercise besides running fast that I hated. And now I'm really enjoying <laughs> weightlifting a lot. So But it depends on where your body, you know, grows to and I'm beginning to enjoy it and I feel the endorphins afterward and it's really a big high and my body's feeling awesome and stronger. And yeah, it's an ever going journey that you just get to discover your body where it is and where it might, where you might like to go with it, but to just let it grow as it it may and, you know, give it what it needs to grow. Absolutely. I mean, it it can be so much fun and there's so many different ways to move your body. You know, I, um... It's funny that I became a yoga instructor because I actually, there was a time where I said I hated yoga (laughs) and I I realized that um, I don't think I hated yoga, but I just was really uncomfortable with being present and being mindful and taking it slow. You know, I, when I, when I was in my teens and twenties, my idea of a good class was, you know, a, a dance or spin or, you know, I just wanted it to be really, really intense. I used to be into boot camp. Mm. So yoga forced me to slow down and I wasn't ready. <laughs> and I love yoga. I, I think that it is just such an amazing practice because it's an exercise you can do for the rest of your life. So it has no expiration date. And um, a story that I love to tell is Um, My husband's from New Zealand. We went to New Zealand for a month um, a while ago and we stayed at an Airbnb and the woman, the host was around 88 years old, I believe. She looked fantastic. She was a total health nut and she invited me to go to a yoga class with her. And this was before I got my yoga certification. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I'm going to class with this elderly woman. I'm, you know, probably going to be the best one in the class. (laughs) She was incredible. She was a much better yogi than me. I was astonished at the poses and it, it's a, it's a practice that it gets better and better, Mm -hmm. you know, for it. There's so much longevity in that. And she really inspired me to become a teacher. So that was a really incredible experience. Well, you, you, you brought up something very interesting when you said when you first took yoga, you weren't ready to be present. And it's interesting, our culture is so fast paced, especially in New York here, where everything is fast, you're on their phone. One guy has said, really, there's no downtime for people anymore. It's like, if you're not, you, it's almost like you're doing something every second of the day, you're not even present with yourself. So it's interesting that you felt like that. And, and that's kind of how I felt with yoga as well at first. But here's something I heard the other day that just threw me for a loop. There was a woman who had a severe, um, spinal issue and she had lost a lot of her mobility to the point where she couldn't even bend over and touch her feet like night she could get to her knees that was about it she was in so much pain and she just started taking yoga something inside of her said this was the best thing for her and she listened to herself or listened to her you know calling inside started taking yoga and now she is the most flexible 50 something year old that is doing things with her body i didn't even know humans could do and and her 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 <laughs> rheumatologist was like i didn't yeah i've never had a patient like her before that totally reversed her situation based on using yoga so yeah i mean listening to your body and listening to where you're being pulled is a really good idea and she did it and it it was transformational for her oh no absolutely i mean the power of being present of practicing mindfulness you know, it's there's so much of illness and anxiety, depression um, that is caused from just a lack of being in our bodies, a lack of staying in the now yeah. and projecting too much in the future or dwelling on the past is just really honing in on where you are right now and your body is such a therapeutic experience. It's amazing. Absolutely. Well, this has been a fascinating talk. I'm hoping it'll engage people, get them excited to find out where their body's called calling them, how they can build more health and 
vitality into their life bit by bit. Uh, and I'm really hoping our conversation has done that for them. Let everyone know where they can find out more about you and, and work with you, perhaps, if they're in the area. Do you work online or is it only in person? I do both. So I, I meet clients on Skype and FaceTime, and I also meet clients in person in the city. So you can find me at www.sexyfoodsexyyou.com. Send me an email or also on Facebook. I'm under Maria Broad as well. Well, Maria. Well, Maria, I just have to thank you again for coming to share your great wisdom today. Thank you so much for coming to Savvy Business Radio. Oh, Christina, thank you so much. The pleasure was mine. Savvy Business Radio broadcasts worldwide via a large podcast network celebrating business owners, entrepreneurs, influencers, and successful individuals. Find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest. Call 732-474-7375 or email Christina at SavvyBusinessRadio.com.